and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we're going to work on this fabulous little dog coat available in small, medium and large. There's a free pattern for this particular uh, pattern but you should know that I'm not sure exactly what small, medium and large actually means to the designer. There's no dimensions to provide what that means. So here is the small version just like you see here. This is the front, obviously the sides and then we have the back and just going like this. Now I've used Red Heart Reflective for the small version so here is my camera and so watch what happens. Did you see that light up? Isn't that awesome? So when the light is hitting this it just is absolutely amazing. For the small version I used only one ball of the pink just like you see here and then I used a ball and just a smidging of for the gray for the small and so you can decide to use that yarn. In the pattern it does call for Red Heart Super Saver so that's something that you can consider as well. So let's get on with this tutorial and let's break down this pattern and work on it together. So here is your dog coat not stuffed with a yarn ball and what's going to happen here is that we're going to start off with the neck area and when we do the neck area we're going to be going back and forth to create a band that goes like this and what's going to happen is that it's not going to be in a continuous circle it's going to be open so there will be a seam line here it will be flat. And then what's going to happen next is that we're going to start off with the neck area just until we get to this leg area and again we're just going to be working on that. Then the project gets divided into three. We have the one side here, we have the other side here and then do you see how the legs are here? Well the whole back side is one particular panel on the back so it gets divided into three and then eventually as we get these panels done we bring it back together to provide the rest and then the legs are done at the very end. And so this whole leg configuration that you see this whole pink is done afterwards. So you're going to end up you know thinking well this is a lot of work but in actual fact when you see it all being put together you realize how simple it is. So let's grab your five and a half uh, millimeter crochet hook today. It's a size I and I'm going to be using Red Heart with Love for today's tutorial. So here is the free pattern that we're working with today and I'm going to be substituting and not doing any of this pattern work right here. I'm not going to do any of the long single crochet stitches. You can decide to do that if you wish. This tutorial today is about the basics of a dog coat. So I have not redesigned this um, particular um, dog sweater. All I'm saying to you is that I'm going to just use regular uh, single crochet without because it's going to work itself out. So if you're working on this pattern, see right here, this here is something that you will address later. Now work in pattern for two rows then you jump up and you go and work with it. So when we go to start this we're going to start off with the neck band. Now you will notice that there are three digits. So until 29, 39 or 49. These are in brackets. These are the different sizes. So this is small, medium and large and the designer has not put exactly what sizes uh, small, medium and large are so I don't really know. So the version that you're seeing on camera today is the small version of, of the 29 here. So when we go to work on it the neck band is all the same. It's just a like for width wise but it's actually the length of it that changes and you're going to be noticing this instruction throughout. So work one, two or one depending on what you're doing with this particular project. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot and I've always been lately creating an extra long yarn tail so I can use a darning needle to be able to fasten that in later and it just works out really well. So according to the instructions we are going to chain six. So this remember doesn't count as one. So one, two, three, four, five and six and simply now just come along and second chain from the hook and I'm just going to turn it over so that it, you normally would just go into the second on the front side. I'm going to turn it over and get that bump on the back and it makes a nicer finish. So I'm going to single crochet myself all the way across and because we have gone second chain from the hook you only have five single crochets going all the way across. So let me uh, finish this up and we'll come right back and we're going to show you the rest of this band and you'll realize how simple that it is. So this classifies as row number one. Now rows number two to twenty nine are all the same so we're just going to turn our work and we're going to chain one. We're always going to do that from rows two to twenty nine and twenty nine is the small size version so if you're doing the medium or large it's thirty nine or forty nine rows. So what we want to do is we've already chained one and we want to come into the very first one right where it sits underneath and go into the back loop only. So normally we would go into a full stitch and you'll see always two strings just like that. So I want you to go into the back loop only. So, okay and then begin to single crochet into the back loop going all the way across. 
So every time you turn your project you're always just going to go into the back loops of this. This is creating that ribbing effect that you can see on the model um, of this particular design and it's really quite desirable. It actually makes the project um, very um, stretchable as well. So when you get that row done just simply just turn and just keep going. So back loop only and remember that you should always end up with five. So if you're going off and having six stitches or four you know something is going wrong. So just make sure that you have your five. It's pretty obvious. So this band will be completely straight and uh, uniform throughout. So what I just don't do is that because this is so quick I would say okay this indentation is two rows so then the next indentation is two. So I go two, four, six, eight, ten and keep going until you get to twenty nine. And when we come back this band will be done and we'll carry on to the next portion of this tutorial. So my 29 rows are complete and this is exactly what you're seeing here and what we have here is that it had an odd number and you will notice that it was either 29, 39 or 49. The reason for it is that when you go to attach this together is that when you attach it it'll look like it's uniform so that you will barely see that there's a change in the when you're going to attach it. So that's why it's at an odd number just in case you're interested. So now we're going to start and work on the body but we're not going to attach this until the very end of the project. So let's uh, begin. We're going to work on the body row number one and again your row counts are going to be different based on the size. So to begin it says working along the edge. So uh, we, we've been going like this. So we just finished. We've turned our work just like we normally have but now instead of working across the top here I want you to work across here. Okay so this is up on the corner work across here. Now in the rules of crochet that we've been single crocheting therefore each one of these rows will comfortably get a single crochet along the side. So if you have 29 rows like this there's going to be 29 stitches that go across and that's why it's asking you to do that. So what we're going to do then is just chain one to start and then we just immediately just start single crocheting along the edge. Okay and just be very conscientious. So there, there's this one matches this row. So therefore there's two rows here so there will be one and two. And you will find that you will notice consistency of where you're putting the stitches. So once you understand and see okay well this is where I put it here therefore this one here I'll put it in the same spot and therefore it will make it very even as you're going all the way across. So single crochet yourself all the way across on this row. We'll come back and we'll move up to row number two. So I've successfully now single crocheted myself along this edge. So now I have a nice clean edge. So this will be where the dog's head is poking out. This here is going toward the back of the body. So let's turn our work and go to row number two. Now row number two um, varies in depending which project you're working on. So it says chain one. So let's just chain one. Okay and it says work one single crochet into the first but you'll see that there's a bracket. So depending on what size you're working on. So small is one. Uh, the medium is two and the large is one. So working one single crochet into the very beginning to the starting one and then it says to do two single crochets into the next. Okay so this just basically how you started is based on the size. What's going to happen is that this is going to open up. So the next one will be one and the next one will be two single crochets. And so this is going to start opening up and causing a really wicked twist. Um, a rounding circle of this and this is going to be because it's going underneath the dog's belly in this area and then it's going to come up over around the side and then on top of the body. So let's just continue to go one single crochet and then the next one is two single crochets into the next and keep doing that all the way until you get to the end. And when we come back we'll move on to the next step. Okay I've now come all the way to the top and now you can see that this is starting to have a nice wicked bend to it and I finished on two single crochets in the end. Now this is my second sample that, that happened on the first one as well. So I know I'm going in the right direction. So row number three is a very beginning to really easy. Just simply chain one and it says single crochet in each single crochet along the top. Now as I told you in the very beginning of this tutorial I'm not going to follow the tutorial or the pattern exactly the way it's shown with the long single crochet. This one today is that it's just a basic outline of a dog sweater based on this design. So I'm not recreating a new design. I'm just all I'm just doing is I'm ignoring the directions when it comes to doing the, this long 
single crochet element because I think there's crocheters that would like to keep it simple to make it very easy for themselves. So this is the whole point of this tutorial today. So continue to single crochet uh, all the way across and we are going to start working on doing the dog legs area next. So we'll meet you back in just a moment. So we're now at the end and now I'm going to show you how to cheat on the instructions. So I want you to pull up a nice generous loop and leave it fall. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create the dog legs uh, uh, areas. We need to create the holes for them as well as the back. And here's what we have and I want you to be able to cheat the system. So what I want you to do is I want you to look at the instructions and it says to um, for the whole area is that we have to work across uh, keeping Con uh, continuity of the pattern. So we're just going to do single crochet. I want you to turn this project as if you're about to start. And it says in the instructions it says from five, seven or nine depending on what size you're going to work on. So what I want you to do is I want you to go one, two, three, four and five. Throw in a stitch marker in that five. Right there. And the reason for it is that we can lay this out really accurately right now. And so even if you miscounted anywhere, this is a great way to cheat the system. So when we go back down looking and going to the next section, the next three stitches are going to be on their own. So one, two and three. Put another stitch marker on the fourth. Okay. So depending on what size you're working on. So it could have been skipping three, five or seven. Okay. So I'm just going to put another stitch marker there. So now I'm going to work here. I'm going to skip here. And now what I want you to do, just cheat the whole thing and go to the other side. And just like you did before. So we're going to go one, two, three, four and five. So put in a stitch marker, fifth from the edge. Just like this. And then I want you to, because we knew that the gap was three stitches over here, we're going to do one, two and three. Go to the fourth and put in a stitch marker. So now what you've done is that you've laid out your dog sweater so that you're going to know exactly where you're going to play within the stitches without worrying about being off in any way for your counts. Therefore your back will be right over your back. Your legs will be right where they should and the underside will be right where it should as well. So let's uh, carry on with the next part of this tutorial. So pulling my stitches back in alignment so I have not fastened off. I just pushed everything back and now we're simply just going to chain one and going to single crochet into the very first one for the next for a total of five. So this is three, four and five. And see my stitch marker is on the fifth so I've just basically just helped myself a lot. So now what it says to do is just turn our work and what we're going to do is we're going to continue to go back and forth to create a strip coming up here and we want a total of 10 rows but in, in the instructions after you get this first one does says repeat the instructions for another nine. So what you have to just do now is there's going to be a total of 10 rows right from here which is the base here going all the way up. So what I would do for me is that you can clearly tell what your rows are. You can just quickly blaze through them or just grab your pen and paper and just help mark yourself off. And then what I always do is cross compare to the others. So continue to just go back and forth. I'm not doing any fancy no back loops just regular single crochet back and forth for a total of 10 rows. So I'll have that done and we'll meet you back in just a moment. Okay, once you have your 10 I want you to fasten off right now and I want you to leave an extra long tail so that we can sew that in afterward and hide it and just fasten off and just leave it off to the side. So now let's begin again and what we need to be very conscientious of is that we started and the project was starting like this. So the next part of this project we have to make sure we just skip these next stitches which we just um, which we have marked and now we're going to continue to go in this middle area here. So let's uh, fasten on our yarn one more time. Well this will be the second time of three. And because you've already marked it with a stitch marker is that's exactly where you're going to go. And simply just join it, chain one and leave this straggler down on top of the line and we want to single crochet ourselves all the way till we run into the next stitch marker. So go right on top of that stitch marker. So because we are going back and forth and the way that I have you doing this is that your stitch work will look seamless even though you are joining and um, reattach or like joining and fastening off your yarn throughout this project. So just simply just keep going around single crochet in every one and you need a total of 10 rows just like you did on the last part. 
and this allows it to be consistent when you're going to work. So please work back and forth for another 10 rows on this whole middle section and when we come back we're going to have that done and then we're going to, to do the last area on the other side of this sweater to really bring the leg area all into conclusion. So please go right on top of that stitch marker so you know you've gone the right distance and continue to go back and forth for 10 rows and, and basically this whole section how, how it reaches up this whole middle section will also reach to that point as well leaving a little gap for the legs right there. So I've now just finished my 10 rows in the middle section just like so. So as you can see you have the first panel the middle and now the last panel needs to still be done. So I'm just going to fasten this off right now and I'm going to leave an extra long tail. Now see how this is finishing off over here and over here? That's right. So if this for example if this finished off here and then this one was here when I finished off it means that I'm off by one or two rows or it could be three rows it all depends on what you're doing. So you want to make sure that the fastening off always happens at the same point. Now because you are finishing off here and over here what's happening is that if you were to restart this line you'd go be, you'd be going back across this way and not the other way. The reason for telling you that is that if you decide to start the next part of the project and you go this way instead of this way you're going to have a line that is very clearly visible that it doesn't match the rest of your coat. So let's uh, begin again and I want you to turn the project as if we were working on it just like how we started. So we started off with the front panel and now have the middle and now this is where we're going to begin the next one here. So let's uh, grab up our yarn once again. Just create a slip knot and start again here. So I'm not starting on the outside I'm starting in the middle okay in the middle section there on where it's marked with the marker and begin. And if you do decide to start from the outside it's going to make that whole panel look like that it's off balance. So you're going to fasten on chain one and single crochet and you will have a total of five going across. So that was two, three, four, and five. So if you had six or seven um, de depending on which size you're working on then it would be wrong. So in this case if you had more than five then you know it's wrong. So you just have to look at the instructions and determine if it was either what was it again it was either five, seven, or nine. So depending on what size dog you're working with. Please carry on and you will, should have a total of ten rows by the time you're done and I do want you to fasten this off when you get to the top. So make sure just go back and forth ten times and we'll see you in just a few seconds. Okay about a minute and a half ago I left you and now I have my 10 rows here. I'm going to fasten off and so now when you check it I fasten off here. I fasten off on this corner and this corner so that makes everything perfect in the world of crochet. So what I want you to do is that I want you to turn this project now you have all three done and I want you to turn it so that all of these here are facing toward the, the way that you're going to crochet. So you're going to start this way. So if this was from the yarn ball you would be carrying along. And so I want you then to pick up this space over here. So, so I want you to fasten on. I'm just going to use a slip knot here and I'm going to fasten it to the very beginning one and this will be the, where the straggler is on this side as well. And we want to leave those out of the way and we're just going to grab up our yarn from the yarn ball and pull through and single crochet in. And this straggler that's coming from there you can put both stragglers in there that are existing and just kind of trap it into position. So you'll have a total of five here. And why is there five? That's because there's five single crochets across on this whole section. So once we run out of stitches where are we going to go? We are going to immediately jump over to the next section. But remember how we skipped three stitches down here? That means that we have to chain three before we can do that. So we have to one, two, three and then we bring up the next section over here and we immediately single crochet ourselves right into the first one. And this straggler from this section just trap that into position as well and continue to single crochet yourself all the way across the back and then when you get to the other side uh, with the other gapping you're going to chain three and then single crochet the remainder. So just continue to go along this entire row doing this and I'll meet you up the next gap just to make sure you're on the right track. So we now are just finishing up the main back area and now it's time to jump to the next section over here. This is the last one. Make sure it's not twisted in any way. We are going to chain three, one, two, and three based on the size that we're doing and simply just going to grab the first stitch, put the next straggler that you see 
right on top of it. It's an easy way to hide your stragglers without having to get a sewing needle afterward and then there should be five single crochets in this panel. And so essentially now you have what appears to be a square hole. Doesn't look square in the picture does it? That's because it ends up flexing for your particular pet as we go and do the legs and the very end. So let's turn our work and this is the last time we're going to be going all the way across um, in the sense that we are going to start um, after this row we're going to start actually making it more narrow as you can see it comes up the side of the dog. So in this row we're just going to single crochet and you're just going to work your way across the row. There's no ends there for about the <laughs> buts about it. Okay so we're coming now to the chaining area. Just like you see. So here's the gap. So essentially if there's three chains here that means that there's three stitches here and we are just going to play in those stitches. So one, two and three. So you're going to single crochet right into that particular chain. Okay and then carry on again and continue to do that all the way across to the other side. We're going to come back because the next part of this tutorial, the tutorial is going to get much faster as we start doing the tapering effect coming up onto the other side. Okay, I've now just come to the end and now we're going to start shaping the back. So the back now, so if you're going to attach this in the middle area of the dog, it will be attaching right here. Now the shaping of the back is where it's going to start tapering. So this will be uh, the attaching. So the tapering of the back is where it's going to start reaching up under the side of the dog. So this whole de de is determined based on the size of your dog. So basically how many stitches are working here is essentially you know how you're doing it. So for the small size that we're going to be doing is that we're going to do this unique pattern. So what we're going to do is that we're going to chain one first and it says as per the instructions DC in the first uh, in the first stitch each at the end of each at the beginning and the end of the row. So I've chained one so the first two are going to go together. So two together and then we just single crochet ourselves all the way across. The next line we are just going to do complete single crochet across. So it's every other line that you're going to do the, the two together at the front uh, of the, the row and at the back of the row. So the start and the end of the row. And what this is doing is it's allowing it to taper up nice and slowly. So this taper depending on the size of your dog will change and extend the length of your dog as you're working along this project. So when we come back I just want to show you this is uh, row number one. And so you will see that in the instructions that it will says that um, DC the first uh, stitch uh, each at the end of the next row and then what's going to happen is that we are going to uh, repeat that every other row for 13 uh, times. So that means that there will be a total of 26 rows but every other one is going to have this decreasing pattern in order to make this pattern work. So if that makes any sense to you, hopefully it does, it'll just be really easy for you to follow along. So I'm just single crocheting ourselves all the way across. So we're just coming along and you can see that there's a absolute continuity in the project from the way that I had you start um, this next section. So we can see that there's really, people are not going to realize that it's actually several pieces put together which is the whole point. And so when we get to the end the final two stitches that you have are going to be two together. So in the first and the next and come together. So now we're going to turn it like this and so then the next row is going to be the same as always. So it's going to be just chain one and single crochet yourselves all the way across. So then just make sure every other row you're doing the two together at the front and the end of the, of the row to make sense and you're going to do that for as long as you need for your dog but in this case it's going to be um, a total of 26 rows by the time everything is said and done. So when we come back I'll be done that particular point and we'll move on to doing the uh, leg work next. Okay about a half hour ago I left you and I left you at the armhole area here as we moved on and you can see I did the whole back panel. So now the coat is completely open just like so and so now it's time to fasten off the last stitch and we want to finish that off completely leaving an extra long tail so that we can fasten that in later with the darning needle. So now it's time to move up to the sleeves area here. You will notice that they are square. 
but once we're done with them they will open up and create a nice uh, round circle just like you see. So we're not gonna fasten this together yet at this point. So when we get to a certain point in this video we're gonna be able to turn this inside just like so, fasten it in and then voila you will have an amazing little dog coat. But we're gonna start with the, the arm sleeves first. So let's grab your yarn and let's begin once again. So let's begin. We want to turn the uh, sweater just like so. And so what I want you to do is think about what, how the dog is wearing this. And what I want you to do is that this here is the closest to the belly and this would be outside. So you would actually see the outside perimeter just like there. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to fasten on the yarn right at this corner here. So I'm just gonna put in my darning needle or my uh, crochet hook and begin once again. Now in the rules of single crochet well, like we talked about before is that there will be three single crochets along this edge and then we just follow up just like so. So we're just following around the perimeter and just in. And so let's bring, bring in that, um, that straggler down in and simply we just want to chain one and single crochet into that same spot. So now we're ready to go. So we're just gonna pull everything nice and tight. And now we're just going to circle around the hole for one single crochet for each one of them. Both sleeves are done the exact same way. So just uh, be very conscientious of that. And so once you get your three done in the bottom, we're now gonna go up through here. So basically every row is a stitch. So you just have to be consistent on where it, where it appears. So just continue to do that. So what I want you to do that now that you know that you just have to continue to circle around and just go once around and I'll meet you back up because we're gonna start making this tapered in so that it fits the dog's leg even better because you can tell that the hole is pretty open. So continue to single crochet all the way to the start and we'll pick back up again and I'll show you what to do next. We've now come all the way around and I just simply want to slip stitch to the very beginning and begin again. So this time what we're going to do is that we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet into the same stitch. And the next two stitches are going to come together. So, the, so just come to a single crochet together. So grab the first one, go into the next one, grab it. You'll have three loops on your hook and pull together. And so then the next one's by itself. So one single crochet. So every other one comes together. So this one are two together and the next one is by itself single crochet. So continue to do that all the way around and this will start uh, creating a taper effect for you. And I'll meet you back up and we'll start up the next round. So we're now at the very beginning again and we're just going to slip stitch to the beginning, chain one and now we're going to single crochet ourselves all the way around on every stitch. So this is gonna allow the taper to really start pulling in um, it's gonna start equalizing everything. So just single crochet all the way around. We'll meet you back up in just a second. We'll be up to the next round after this. So we're now all the way back around and simply just want to slip stitch again and chain one. So you'll read in the instructions it says repeats round two and three all again. So what we're going to do is that the first one we're going to single crochet in and then the next two are together and this will cause it to taper in even more. Okay, so those two are together. The next one's by itself. The next two are together. And the next one's by itself. So continue to do that all the way around. We'll meet back up and start the next round. Okay, I've come all the way back around. It's time to slip stitch again. This is the second last row that we need to do. We need to chain up and simply single crochet into each one going all the way around. And when we come back we're going to start to do reverse single crochet. And if you've never done that stitch you're going to love it. It does a nice finishing technique. So just single crochet all the way around on this round. Okay, let's slip stitch. We're all the way around. Slip stitch again. And now let's begin to do reverse single crochet. So how to do reverse is that we actually are gonna work in the opposite direction from what you're normally used to. And so to, how to begin this we're going to simply just chain one. We are going to go into the very first stitch that you find and just go right in. Grab the yarn and pull through the bottom like so. And then grab the yarn and pull through two. Okay, so you're kind of thinking well that doesn't look much different. So now go into the stitch before this stitch. So normally we would work forward. We're going backward. So we're going into that stitch. Okay, and pull the yarn through. So it's on the bottom and then pull the yarn through two. And you're going to start seeing this take effect after four stitches. So go into the next stitch going in. Grab the yarn pull toward the bottom 
grab the yarn, pull over. So into the next and what you're going to start seeing is these beautiful lines on the outside taking effect and this is called reverse single crochet and it provides a really nice thick looking edge and it's really quite easy to do. A lot of people do these on these afghans. It's a great little stitch. So you can see it has a really nice finishing effect. So go all the way around doing reverse single crochet and then fasten off and then begin the next sleeve and again follow the same tip of starting on the inside of the of the dog um, chest area so that you don't have any slip stitching or anything on the outside of the dog if anybody's going to photograph your dog. So we'll meet back up in just a second. When you get all the way back around you're simply just going to slip stitch to where you started like so and pull through and then using a darning needle you're going to weave in your ends after there. So I'm going to leave an extra long tail and just pull through. So please do the second sleeve and so then that's the first one. So you can see how the square just turned into a sleeve just like this and we're going to do the next one on this side. Okay so there's one here. So let's do the other one and again I want to start on the inside of the, the breast area so probably down here uh, when we go. So do that. I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you back up and we're going to sew everything together and we still have some final trimming to do once we get this next sleeve done. So now that I have both sleeves done I still have to weave in my ends and deal with those but now it's time to put the middle together. So you can tell that when I do this that the legs will be sticking out just like this. Therefore I'm looking at the right, I'm not looking at the right side. I want you to turn it and so that the legs are facing inward like this and the reason for that is that we're going to put the seam of this on the inside. And so what you have to be very conscientious of is that when we started off doing below the sleeves here we started doing the taper. In the taper we want to keep that so that the taper it just stays as is. So you're going to see that it's going to come out like this. So I'm going to start off at the bottom area and what I've done is that I've just got a darn needle do and I have a slip knot at the end and this is a great way for hiding it. So I'm just going to come into one side and go into the matching of the other side and what I want to do is I want to kind of look exactly where everything is on this side so that I'm matching it perfectly on the other. Okay so I would probably want to take my time at doing this so that you can see that everything will line up perfectly as it's going across. So we're going to do a quick whip stitch across and when I get to the end of the line here I just want to put it through the slip knot and tighten everything in and keeping the slip knot and everything or the tail on the top and simply just keep going in like this and just keep going like that. And you want to do the whole thing. So if you run into any tails this is the perfect time to catch those in because it will save you doing extra work later and just continue to get it and the seam then will be on the inside of the dog coat by the way that you have folded it now. So continue to whip uh, stitch yourself all the way across and come right up to the to the very top here up to the neck and then fasten off and then we're going to carry on. We have the one little trim to do and that's the edge here on the back. So I'll leave that for you and I'll be right back. So I'm now just about to finish off the top area. The best way to hide in the seam areas is a technique. I'm not sure if there's an official name for it but I've just come out and now all I want to do is that I want to come in to the project into the seam area and I'm going back down here. And I want to continue to go back and forth three times because it is impossible to pull out if the yarn is in three different directions. So I've gone that direction. So now I want to slip in my needle somewhere else but very close to where I am to capture in to go in the other direction. And then for the final time I want to sneak in again somewhere else but in the same area. and like that. So, so basically it will be impossible to pull this end out because the yarn is going in three different directions. So therefore every time you want to do any kind of finishing technique that's the best way to do for this. So let's uh, turn our project and uh, we're going to final off all our loose ends and we're going to turn this project um, so that the outside is out like so. So now you officially have your coat shape you got your legs going on. You got your neck collar. So now it's just time to finish off this back end over here of the coat and what we need to do is do the same finishing technique that we did with the legs. So let's do that next. 
So here's the final technique that we need to do. We need to follow this whole back area and we're gonna come up and this will be underside the dog coming around the top of the dog and then back around. We're gonna do a reverse single crochet. So we're just gonna slip it in right close to where it's joined at the seam and we're going to do a reverse. So we're gonna attach it first, chain one and then come into the same stitch again and pull through and pull through two. So now let's do a reverse. Remember every one of these rows equals one single crochet. So you can easily follow this as you're going around. So go into the next row just on the edge, grab the yarn, pull through and you see how I've gone backwards. So normally I would work forward but I'm actually working back. So I'm just gonna go into the next section, pull through and pull through and this will create a beautiful line just like you saw on the leg. So it's very easy once you master this concept um, I'm going pretty quickly now but I have to tell you when I learned this concept I was pretty slow. So just continue to, to reverse single crochet all the way around uh, this particular dog coat and when you get to the end I want you to slip stitch, fasten off and let's clean up our ends, all of our ends and I'll meet you back up at the end where we're gonna do a little bit of show and tell. And if you ever do this pattern please uh, be, uh, you know, we'd love to see your creativity and share it on Facebook. Um, I do get a kick on seeing people actually finish stuff and being really excited about it. So there you go. See, you see a nice edge from this to that and it's wonderful. So we're back again and I have finished off everything. All the yarn is in. There's beautiful. It's wonderful and you can see that this amazing pattern on redheart.com is amazing. Even if you do not do the fancy stitch work, you still have the pr uh, proper sizing. Still looks absolutely perfect through out there and everything turns out to be absolutely wonderful. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. Stay tuned for more free tutorials and ideas. Until next time. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. We'll see ya.